Uh, first off, I want to thank the grace of heaven and the virtues of the masters, the mercy of the grand predecessor, predecessor, transmitting masters, and lectures, and everyone here today uh, for this opportunity to talk about, um, yeah, the extraordinary and, well, I say also unmatched <laughs> uh, Tao tradition. Uh, tradition might be, you might think eh, it's not exactly that the right word. Because uh, here we, uh, <clears throat> so the, the Chinese title is Yi Guan Zhen Chuan, okay, the Su Sen. Okay, so Su Sen, yeah, you can say it's extraordinary, it's it's unmatched, it's very rare, okay. Uh, Zhen Chuan is, you can say it's like a, a true, an authentic teaching or authentic, uh, genuine transmission, uh, we can say lineage, things like that, okay. And then Yi Guan well, yeah, it, it was really talking about Iquan Dao, okay, so the, the all-pervading all pervading Dao, right? Um, so, but yeah, tradition, I, I just try to, I, I don't want the title to be too long, so so I just say tradition, just like in any kind of practice or like religions, they have their own the, a tradition, right? The tradition, tradition includes, yeah, it's the lineage, right? The transmission and also the practice right the teachings the practice everything okay so uh all right uh okay so this uh the Tao tradition right so it's the lineage of transmission of heaven's mandate and the true teaching of the Tao right so yeah so the important thing about the the Tao and you know we talk about the Tao the difference between Tao and religions uh, there's this thing called the heaven's mandate um, and this is what's uh, passed down or, or transmitted, okay, over the ages uh, since the beginning. Well, since um, you can say since since the the first patriarch, okay. So uh, we've talked about the patriarchs Tao in in the title. I think the topic was called the Masters of Tao. Uh, I don't know, maybe it was last year or something. But <clears throat> okay, so so that's really the important thing that you know the, how that gets passed down uh, so we're not really gonna we're not talking about how it's that gets done but um you know but, th but that's the important thing in the Tao and that are the Tao transmission this this heaven's mandate without this heaven's mandate then it's just you're just passing down you know books you know it could be scriptures or whatever but that's just getting passed down along with the teachings and uh, but that's not the mandate, okay? That's mandate is something else, all right? So, uh, and without a mandate, then that's all you have is just teachings, and that that's what we call religion, okay? Because um, they they don't have that kind of man, they don't have this particular mandate uh, from heaven, right? <clears throat> um, so, all right. So now uh, there there is there was a saying, right? <laughs> all roads lead to Rome, right? This is back in the days of the Roman Empire. But so basically, now all religions, they, yeah, they all say, you know, the, the objective is to go to heaven, right? Um, so you can say that all religious practices, they say, well, that they, they, practicing in their religion uh, gets you to heaven, right? <clears throat> but uh, from our point of view, from the Tao, um, we know that. Well, religion, it, it, this this heaven is not really the heaven, okay? So this is really an intermediate destination, <laughs> if you will. This, this, they're what they call this heaven, okay? Um, now, I mean, actually, it, the, the original intent is, yeah, the heaven that we talk about, that, you know, you can say absolute heaven. But uh, in practice, the religions can only get you to this, what we, this is an intermediate heaven, okay? So there's actually another... A further destinations, which is the true the destination, right? So because this theirs is this temporary heaven or celestial heaven, uh, whereas the Tao gets you all the way to to transcend the cycle of birth and death, right? The absolute heaven. So that's really what we want, and that's really the original intent of what the religions or or you can say the founders of the the religions. You know that's what. Uh, they want to get us, the sentient beings, people to, to get to the absolute, you know, to transcend birth and death. But, uh, you know, without this mandate, 
without this heaven's mandate, then you know that's not possible, right? You, we need the uh, now in the beginning, yes, uh, you know the, there are the this I uh, guess you can say the pra practitioners, the the cultivators in those religions at the very beginning with when those founders are there, uh, you know, Buddha, uh, Lao Tzu, Confucius, whatever, Jesus, for example. <clears throat> I mean, they, some of them were able to, because Jesus, for example, you know, he, he had the mandate as well. And so, so he could, you know, pass on that, transmit essentially the Tao to them and they can also reach, you know, transcend the, the cycle as well. But later on, it's just, it, it, you know, it just becomes a regular kind of religious practice and tradition without heaven's mandate. And then there is, so then they, people can only get to this, what we call this temporary heaven. All right. So that's just becomes an intermediate point. And this is still within the cycle of birth and death. So, um, uh, so that's why we need this Tao, which is the way uh, to transcend actually. <clears throat> now, it doesn't mean that we necessarily have to start, oh, we, like in this life, we don't necessarily have to be practicing some religion and then to get to the Tao. Okay, so this is just, I mean, right now, because we already have this affinity, maybe from past lives, you know, we've been uh, perhaps practicing in some religious tradition before and we've accumulated, uh, you know, merits, uh, established a good foundation in our virtues so that we are able to have that affinity today to receive the Tao. And because the Tao is now available to everyone, uh, that uh, we're able to get receive the Tao. And then so now, you know, the, what's so special, I guess you can say, is what's so extraordinary about the Tao is that we can now transcend uh, the cycle of birth and death, all right? Um, so, you know, it, you know, if we if we have this affinity, then why not take that the quickest route, right? By receiving and cultivating Tao to reach the final destination uh, of transcending birth and death, right? <clears throat> instead of you know, instead of pursuing the religious practices, which is still still won't get you all the way to point C, <laughs> um, and we still eventually have to get to go through the Tao, okay? Um, and so, so yeah, so religions, yeah, they all, uh, they all want to get to that final destination, but it goes through the Tao, right? Um, and they, that's, you know, obviously they, they don't know that, okay? Um, you know, but religion, of course, is helpful to establish a foundation and affinity, right, for people to be able to receive the Tao, right? Because without that, it, it's kind of, a, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the Tao is necessary to, to transcend, to receive the Tao, <clears throat> but religions are also, uh, you can say, yeah, you can say they're necessary, a prerequisite to getting to the point of receiving the Tao in the first place. So, so but, but this, you know, has to do with the timing of, you know, the, the, like the green, the red, and the white era. So the white era right now, hopefully, we, you know, we, we, we've already in the past, in the red era and the green era, past few thousand years that we've been, you know, in these religions, we've been practicing, we've been cultivating, and now in this white era, this Tao is available. So, uh, and we have that sufficient foundation and affinity to uh, to receive the Tao, right? Uh, so that that's very special. So, uh, but today there's still obviously there are, you know, the vast majority of people they still don't know about the Tao. And they're still in religions, and you can say that maybe they they don't they don't have a sufficient affinity yet with, uh, to be able to receive the Tao, um, right? Or or enough of a foundation yet. So you know, everyone is on different uh, points on that timeline, so to speak, uh, on that path towards you know eventual transcending the cycle of birth and death, right? Because you know, Buddha says, you know, every, all sentient beings eventually will become, will, will attain uh, Buddhahood. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's just a question of when, right? So, um, 
All right. So yeah. So the, so the religions again, it's it's important uh, so that we can have that foundation. Uh, receiving the Tao and cultivating Tao takes us to the highest level, though. All right. So although we hear that there are saints from religious practice who are uplifted to absolute heaven, right? The key is that they have the affinity, right? Without that affinity, there would be no chance for that to happen. So, so we've uh, you hear stories about of um, well, people who they they have. Uh, let's say virtues, or they have some a lot of merits in in life, and as a result, you know, but they didn't receive the Tao, uh, and as a result, they become a temp, you know, a, a you could say a deva, right? Basically, uh, uh, a saint in temporary heaven, uh, but then they can be uplifted further to to actually transcend. Okay, and this can be this can be done by I uh, potentially it could be done by a Buddha or Bodhisattva, right? They can do that, uh, or uh, it could be by a human, right? Just like we can uplift our parents, for example, deceased parents. Okay, uh, same idea, but again, but the only way for that to happen is they have to have that affinity with with those people, right? Um, and if without that affinity, it's it's nearly impossible. Okay, so, so the, the, then they would have to, you know, hope that they, when they <laughs> re are reborn in the world, that they are born in the in the right place and time. You know, with, with having the affinity with the whoever, uh, that they can be able to receive the Tao. But but you know that that's 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 difficult, right? Um, okay. Oh, yeah, plus, uh, plus, right. So religions, you know, it's, it takes many lifetimes, right, to even get to this, potentially get to that point. Uh, well, um, I mean, they can get to point B, you know, in, in potentially in one lifetime, okay. But to, to, to get to the point where they can receive the Tao, right, have that affinity, have that foundation, it, it'll take many lifetimes. And then for, the, for us... Because we have that affinity already, we have that uh, sufficient foundation to be able to receive the Tao, we can actually transcend in this one lifetime. Uh, we have to put in we have to put in the effort though. We have to work. We have to work at it. We have to cultivate. Right? If we don't cultivate, uh, then it's yeah, it's you know, nothing comes for free, right? Nothing is free. So so we have to put in the effort to achieve, right? If we don't put in the effort, we're not going to achieve. I mean, it's true that yes, uh, being having received the Tao, and if we don't do anything really bad, uh, yes, we can kind of go to heaven, uh, but it's temporary. It's still temporary, okay. Um, and in the next kalpa, you know, or the next cycle, uh, we will still have to come back to the world and be born again in the world. <clears throat> it's only if we have sufficient merits and virtue that we can actually transcend and, you know, essentially become like a Bodhisattva uh, or a Buddha, um, which, you know, they're, they're, they, don't have to, they don't have to be reborn um, unless they want to, right, to, to fulfill a vow. So, so, again, yeah, we have to put in the work. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's also, it's just temporary, okay? So, Holy Teacher says, yeah, 10,800 years, um, you know, that, that would be... The most that we can get if we don't have sufficient merits, uh, right? So, 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 yeah, um, we we have to work on it. Right? Uh, and you know, this uh, the Tao being so you know extraordinary, so precious. You know, that's why even these monks, right? The monks, uh, you know, you think well, monks, they 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 probably are better, well, they are, you could say, they are probably better cultivated than most people are, uh, even for people in the Tao. Um, but, you know, yet they still have to receive the Tao. Okay. Uh, this, you know, this, this, the, 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 I guess the over 200 year old monk in, that was in, Th in Thailand, uh, uh, you know, Buddhist monk, uh, who received the Tao, and then uh, I don't know. This is some other place that uh, some other uh, Buddhist monks uh, receiving the Tao. So, yeah, because again, you know, the re in religious practice, they, it's gonna they know that realize it's gonna take take life many lifetimes to actually get to 
uh, they're becoming like a Buddha. So, but receiving the Tao is the quickest way, especially right now when it is available. And then, so, you know, you also have nuns, uh, you know, Christian nun here and then uh, other people. So, so this Tao is not, I mean, it's, it's, you can say it was kind of like a, maybe a Chinese tradition. Well, it was also in India too, but, uh, but it, it's for everyone now because this is the time of universal salvation, right? So the world, people, the world over, as long as they have that affinity. Um, so obviously, you know, these monks and, you know, there's none, they're not attached to the forms. They're not, a, they're not so attached to, uh, or, or, yeah, to the, I don't know, the, the, the doctrines of their religions that says, oh, you know, that I, this is, you know, I, you have to believe in their, their doctrine the and follow their doctrine completely uh but so they they have that yeah you could say maybe the wisdom as well you know the, the affinity and the wisdom to be able to go beyond break through that uh and to receive the Tao. so so that's it's good for them um okay all right uh you know there's uh there's clearly you know, there's this one way, right? So there's only this one way, which is the Tao. Uh, so why do people not cultivate, though? You know, it's uh, yeah, even you know, don't don't even talk about the 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 other people who haven't received the Tao, but people who have received the Tao, right? How many are actually cultivating? Okay, um, you know. You can say that people don't know the preciousness of Tao and just how extraordinary it really is, right? Uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, religions. There are many religions, right? But the Tao, there's only one Tao, right? Now, obviously, it's hard. It's kind of hard to explain to people. Say, well, this Tao is so precious. Um, yeah, I, you know, it, it, you can, you can't do it in five minutes, <laughs> uh, and try to. You know, persuade or convince people that wow, this is yeah, the Tao is something that they really want. I mean, um, yeah, we we say you know just like the last topic we talked about, so why why we must receive the Tao? When you say yeah, you, you, all these good things, uh, we can transcend. But then they they believe the same thing in their religion that they believe that that's what they can get, that can happen to them too. So it's uh, yeah, it's that's not an easy thing to you know try to convince people of that. Uh, if they're if they're really stuck on their particular practice or particular doctrine teachings, um, it, then it's you know it's hard. Okay. Um, now you know so people you know because they don't know how precious they don't know how to cultivate, so therefore they really don't take advantage of the benefits of Tao. Okay, they don't get the benefits. Um, you know it, it's really comes from this process of transformation, what we call cultivation, right? Um, basically, just like, you know, it's like I said, nothing comes for free, right? It's not like you receive the Tao and then we're good to go, we can go to heaven um, and we can stay, right? It's, we have to put in the effort. Uh, it's just, we have to transform ourselves first. So that's one of the things, things excuse me, uh, when we talk about cultivation, right? The, you can, we can say the, the inner cultivation, the cultivating of the self, uh, which is a, a process of transformation, transforming ourselves, okay? Uh, just like, uh, well, okay, yeah, transforming ourselves uh, into someone better, right? So first, you know, it's like we have to recognize that we have an ego, right? We have biases, we have subjectivity, we have uh, attachments, all these things, uh, and we need, but we also have to recognize that we also have this true self, the true nature, okay, the, the Buddha nature, and that has, should have none of those things, and so we have to transform from being that human or, uh, yeah, that human nature into that Buddha nature, right, um, so, and only we can do that for ourselves. Nobody, nobody can do it for us. 
and not even the Buddha can do that for us. Okay, so so this is a personal effort. We have to an individual effort. We must do uh, in order to achieve, in order to make that transformation. So it's just like you know, it's just like uh, in nature, right? You have, um, you know, how do you how do you get charcoal? It has to be transformed from the wood, right? You kind of go through some uh, chemical process of burning and whatever to turn it into charcoal. Right or you know uh, you can another you know kind of uh, analogy would be like gold ore right gold ore when you dig up the gold ore uh, it's like this rock that contains some gold in it and to extract you know to, you have to smelt it to extract the gold from the rock right then then it goes through a process of trying to removing other impurities so that you try to achieve you know pure gold. Um, and so the same thing with, with you know, humans, for, for us cultivators, that's what we're trying to do, right? Uh, to transform ourselves from being a sentient being, uh, you can say an ignorant, um, <laughs> sentient being, a delusional sentient being into one who is awakened, um, enlightened, okay? Um, and, and that is really the difference between a sentient being and a bodhisattva or a Buddha, okay? So... <clears throat> um, so, so it's not, you know, cultivation is not superficial. Right? Many people are misinformed when they think that receiving the Tao is all they need to do. Okay, that's just like, you know, you paint a rock, right, with gold, gold paint. And you say, hey, this rock is now, it's solid gold, right? Uh, you know, obviously that's not the case. You know, we, we cannot just acquire a label, you know, say, oh, I've received the Tao, I'm a Tao kin. We have to live up to it. Right? live up to that uh, being a, a someone who had received the Tao, a cultivator. Right? If we expect to be able to transcend birth and death and become a Buddha, then we must go through the cultivation process to transform ourselves from a sentient being into a Buddha or a Bodhisattva, you know, someone who's awakened and enlightened. Right? So this is, and there's no exception, right? Everyone has to go through that process. Uh, okay. So, uh, all right. So yeah. So what, you know, what's extraordinary about the Tao? I mean, it's you, you know, it's very rare. Okay, because there is only one Tao, uh, whereas whereas you have all sorts of religions, <coughs> it is unmatched and un unsurpassed. Okay. So I mean, on the surface, maybe if for the those who are, uh, you can say, not as well informed, <laughs> um, you know, they might. Like, they might look at the Tao and and see the practice, uh, the teachings and stuff, and they say, well, it's no different than religion, right? Um, but it really is rare. Again, it's that heaven's mandate. Heaven's mandate, unfortunately, we cannot see it directly, okay? Um, but, you know, it, it manifests itself, all right? So, um, you know, obviously, the Tao is the source of all things, right? So, you know, therefore, it is its preciousness is innumerable. In other words, everything in the universe is the result of the Tao, is because of the Tao. And so we can say, wow, we can point to all of nature uh, as saying, wow, so this is why Tao is so amazing, right? Uh, and, you know, basically, uh, you know, <laughs> this is, I'm kind of borrowing this from, uh, Amy, but this is, you know, this is showing that, you know, the Tao, you know, starting with the zero and the one, basically the Tao is the zero and the one, okay, it's not just the zero, uh, but it's basically, you can say, like, essence and function, okay, so, or stillness and motion, all right, so <laughs> these two, it produces then the yin and yang, the duality, and then from there you get the three, which is then the, the myriad things, it produces everything, so this, if you look at nature, this is this is the process. This is how it, it came about. So everything is following those principles, those laws of nature, uh, that, and those were derived from you know from this process here, or from the original. You can say the one truth, uh, and everything else is created as a result. Okay. Um, so, and as a human being, right, we are also a microcosm of the Tao and the universe, right? Because we have that Tao essence, right? The Buddha nature, 
uh, and we can create anything, right? Even even life. Now, of course, that's not necessarily just uh, because uh, uh, we are human, but you know, the all sentient beings, uh, or in, you know, all anything that has the the qualities, I guess, for for uh, or the yeah uh, for having life can you know create life. But um, but that's yeah, it is because the, the Tao, right? Um, okay, so. The extraordinary, uh, what is so extraordinary, uh, the, uh, the Tao, uh, the transmission of Tao, right? Um, so receiving Tao is the process of getting rid of the false and manifesting the true. Okay, so this is something that we have to kind of figure out to learn. Okay, so in, uh, obviously when we receive the Tao at first, we probably don't realize uh, all these things. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, then we learn that oh geez you know all all this material stuff is is false and uh the <laughs> you know all, all these things that we think is yeah that we enjoy that we uh pursue uh we say oh this, this is all false um uh but yeah yeah i mean yeah okay it, it's false in, in a certain sense okay in, in the sense of uh, in, in, or in the context of the Tao, yes, uh, or in context, yeah, of the Tao, of our Buddha nature, yeah, these things are all false, right? Uh, but of course, when we are still here, yes, we, we make use of it, um, all right? Uh, now, <clears throat> uh, so, the, the true, manifesting the true, so it's again this you can also say that the false is kind of the what's on the surface the the superficial stuff right the true is what's true is the the genuine article the the the, the true stuff that's inside okay so inside of us that's our true nature our buddha nature right and it manifests through the conscience and it manifests through our virtues all right so so that is what's and and through our sincerity okay um, and that is what's true, right? Uh, and so that that's 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 part of you know this transmission that will, will kind of let us know that it's pointing to that our true nature, our true self. Okay, uh, and it's also so so we talk about the you know extraordinariness of the the truth of the Tao principles and the heaven's mandate, right? Um, we we had talked about this before. Uh, <coughs> And you know the the there's the point transmission by the enlightened master, right? And that's really, uh, you know, the grand predecessor once said that the only point, uh, only the point transmission, you know, is the Tao, right? Everything else is religion or you know, say teaching and practice, right? So, so when we receive the Tao, receive that point transmission, opening up the portal, right? Heavenly portal opening up our third eye, opening up our wisdom eye, that is the Tao, okay? That point, that transmission right there. Um, and that is really the Tao. Everything else is kind of, and that, that that you know, it's, although you see kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, 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 a form, right, going on, but, uh, of the whole ceremony, but it's it's invisible, this trans point transmission. And it's, it's conducted, it's really, you know, holy teacher, Jigong Buddha, who is doing that spiritually, we don't see it, right? Uh, and that is really the essence of the Tao, right there, right? So everything else is kind of is ancillary to it. Okay, it's it's kind of <laughs> uh, the forms, um, right? And then so so that's you know we get the the Dharma, what we call the Dharma, the three the three treasures, right? Uh, when we receive the Tao, uh, so that is really the key. Uh, you can say that that is what's being passed down, right, over the ages through this the Tao in this Tao lineage, Tao tradition. Um, I I mean the three treasure itself is not is not. I mean you can say that there's forms, right? It's it's you know um, uh, you can say it's knowledge, but actually, so it's that first treasure, right? That that point transmission is really the key. Uh, and then, okay, so we have also have the lineage or the true transmission of heaven's mandate. All right, so it's from patriarch to patriarch passed down until now we have, 
you know, the transmitting masters who can transmit the, give us this point transmission, right? So that's because of that mandate uh, that we that we still have. Um, okay. <clears throat> and so, you know, at, at the moment of that point transmission, you can say our root to this world, right? Our root in this world is severed, right? We enter into the ultimate existence of non-birth and purity, okay? Um, yeah, and you know, so the saying goes, right? When the six roots are purified, it is the way or the Tao, right? So the six roots, right? The roots of our six senses, right? These are rooted in this world, right? Rooted in forms, okay? So uh, we have to cut that off, get rid of that, right? So that's why we say, you know, let go of, you know, relinquishment, let go of everything, let go of attachment, let go of these forms, okay, don't become attached to these forms. <clears throat> and then we basically, when we do that, then we return back to our true nature, our true self, okay. Um, <clears throat> right, so the enlightened master with heaven's mandate, right, he undertakes the responsibility of establishing this golden thread, this true transmission and lineage of the Tao. The continuity of heaven's mandate that transmits the unsurpassed true tradition of the mind dharma. Right? Receiving the mandate from God, pointing out the door of life and death in sentient beings, the truth or the true reality of life, and liberating sentient beings from the cycle of birth and death. So, you know, um, so that's why, so that's, you know, this, this, what's so extraordinary, so unsurpassed about this, the Tao transmission. And of course, right now we are in this time of, you know, period of universal salvation of the, of not, not, you know, universal salvation, meaning all, all humans who have the affinity can receive the Tao right now while the Tao is available. And also the three realms, well, the three realms, of course, means uh, the human realm, you know, the human world plus the the deva, the the celestial, the the temporary heaven saints, right? The the devas uh, realm, and also the underworld. Okay, so again, now the you know for to 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 for the spirits in the underworld to attain achieve uh, attain salvation. It, again, it's through uh, basically their descendants. Okay, like like us, for example, our deceased ancestors okay they're they're likely to be in the underworld <clears throat> and only because we receive the Tao and we cultivate then they benefit all right so so and then hopefully you know they can also achieve salvation if we ourselves can achieve uh, attain that salvation right uh right uh so okay uh yeah Right. So this is, again, yeah, this is, you know, why, why this, this universal salvation is, is, you know, very precious as well during this time, because it's, it's a once in a world cycle. One, uh, you can say it's a small kalpa, right? 129,600 years, uh, this opportunity comes about, right? And humans have been around uh, basically, you know, for about 60,000 years. You know, this is, this is, you know, down here, it's like the, it's six o'clock. It's the beginning of, the world cycle uh, and then getting around to the eight o'clock period and this you know man you know humans are, are come about uh, and so since then it's been about 60,000 you know 50 60,000 years uh, we're over here now around one o'clock and this is uh, you know you know according to the cycle we're already past the halfway so we're already in decline here things are in decline and therefore, this is kind of like the harvest period. Uh, so um, this universal salvation, that's why we have universal salvation. I mean, you know, it, it didn't happen earlier because, you know, earlier it would have been, you know, things are still in developing, right? But now we're in decline. Uh, the world, everything is in decline. And therefore, uh, it's approaching the end. You know, in the end, <laughs> things are going to kind of uh, be destroyed. So, uh, so that's why this this universal salvation exists right now. And and you know, because of uh, God's mercy and also the mercy of the Buddhas, uh, you know, especially Maitreya Buddha, um, that you know, this is 
So this this is you know this is an opportunity that we should cannot be missed, right? Because um, if we miss it, we have to wait another at least another full cycle, right? One hundred twenty nine thousand six hundred years, uh, roughly. Okay, so 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 we all, assuming we've all received the Tao now, we should uh, do our best to cultivate and. And to be able to transcend this cycle, right? That that's the that's the goal. Okay, so um, right in the past, it was basically, you know, we first people first have to cultivate, and then they can receive the Tao, right? But now we can receive the Tao first, and then we can cultivate. Okay, so again, the timing is different. So you can say that the practice is different as well. Um, I've said this before that. Yeah, we can't be stuck on those practices in the past um, or the traditions. I mean, it's things are different now, right? Um, okay. <clears throat> so the you know the three okay. So I mentioned the three realms um, uh, can attain salvation, right? So everyone now you know basically oh male and female in the past is mostly male, but today it's. It seems to be mostly female, okay? So, can participate in Tao propagation and cultivation and achieve or transcend according to their own virtues and merits, okay? Again, it, this is, it's all depending on ourselves, okay? Their own virtues and merits. So, we all have to, we can't, like, rely or depend on, say, oh, my parents, uh, they're, they're cultivators or they're transmitters, and therefore, I can just write their, ride their cult tales into heaven, Uh you know, it's it's that that it's not like that. Um, we we have to we have to kind of establish our own virtues and and merits. Okay. Uh, and okay, so what's what's special, right? Also, that we have there's Buddhas and saints are supporting the Tao, right? The uh, propagation uh, transmission of the Tao, uh, and you know, basically, you know, so this, this, this is like, yeah, you may have seen this before, the, the uh, diagram showing uh, various the, the Buddhas and saints, uh, and this is like a, you know, in a temple in a Dharma class, okay, so, and you have all this stuff going on. Now, I mean, this is, this is the spiritual side of things that we don't, most people don't see, but this, this person, this is, this person did see, this is what that person saw, okay, and, and so that's what how it was described. Um, basically, uh, what's special in the Tao? Uh, there's channeling by the Buddhas and saints, right? We call it, you can say spiritual channeling. You know, one form is through the sand writing that you see down here. This is the that uh, the, the, the the where the sand, and then they they kind of write uh, using that stick. Um, and uh, so this is channeling, yeah, the Buddhas, and they have messages, they have revelations to, to give to us, uh, through this, this is one form of, of the channeling, okay, um, and so also they can appear in dreams, people's dreams, to, uh, let them know, you know, that, hey, they need to, uh, just like remember, we uh, uh, one example, one of many examples, right? Uh, the the uh, was it the pastor who um, received the Tao? He had that dream. Jigong, it was basically Jigong Buddha gave him this dream to let him know about the Tao, right? Uh, and so, so obviously that happens. Only, that doesn't happen to everyone. That's it depends on the person's affinity. So, um, and so we're. You know, you know, we, we, we're not all going to have these types of dreams, um, right? And then also their, their miracles happen, okay? Uh, you know, there, there, there are many, you know, stories of people in situations, in disasters, uh, situations uh, where they escape um, or, you know, somehow survive. Uh, or maybe, you know, they were because... Uh, you know, maybe they had cancer, you know, some serious uh, cancer, and they managed to, 
you know, it goes into remission. It's, it's, it's gone because of basically, yeah, you can say it's help from the Buddhas, but it, it's, it's really, you know, they, they make a vow, right? They, they make a, a great vow and they start uh, fulfilling their vow um, to, to, you know, perform merits, uh, to propagate the Tao or whatever. And then the cancer went away. Okay. So, uh, so this is what's so special about the Tao. I mean, in religion's practice, uh, yeah, they might have some miracles. Um, you know, some might even have some kind of spiritual channeling type of thing, but, but really the, the, the Buddha's, are are really just helping the Tao, okay? Um, those who receive the Tao, and if they, if we are sincere about cultivating, then they are there to help, okay? And you know, and also to help in, in propagating the Tao, etc. Now, cultivating in, in daily life, right? So, in, unlike in the past, now we we now can cultivate in everyday life, uh, right? There's no need to shave our head, no need to <laughs> become like a monk. Uh, again, that's that's the past, the pack practice in the past, in the in the green and the red period, but now we're in the white era, so we don't need to do that. So that's what makes also partly make it a little bit more special, right? We don't have to give up our career and family even, right? So we don't have to do that. We don't have to go off in the monastery, go off to the mountains to cultivate. We just do it in at home, um, uh, and or you know, and also in society, just in everyday life. Right, so while while we fulfilling our responsibilities of our mundane roles that right, we have, right? So uh, whether you know maybe you know we work or we're a student or you know uh, we have family, um, whatever the case, you know those are our mundane roles in life. Uh, we still fulfill those responsibilities, but we at the same time we can cultivate Tao. Okay, so that's <clears throat> that's important. Uh, and that's, you can say, that's why it makes it, you know, the most convenient method of cultivation and practice, you know, this Tao. So it's, um, right? Uh, so we don't have to become like a monk. <clears throat> uh, so, so that, that's, and this, this is also, you know, so that, that's why it makes it, it should make it easier to, for people to, uh, to cultivate, okay? Um, you know, at the same time, you might say, yeah, sometimes it's harder because we have to face all these things in life, right? Uh, but still, but that's, you know, facing, facing situations, facing people in life is, uh, that's, that's a given, right? That's, that's just, everyone has to do that. Okay. So, but if we can cultivate as well, we can, we can also change our mindset, change, transform, remember, transform ourselves if, you know, Get rid of our bad habits, our bad temper, uh, things like that. And the more we do that, uh, and obviously we have to change our views, okay, our, our perspectives on things, uh, understand uh, karma, understand the meaning of life. Um, the more we understand, the more we know, uh, the more it will help us in our cultivation as we are able to let go of things, you know, get rid of getting rid of those attachments and biases, getting rid of the ego. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> okay. So, all right. So, uh, first, all right. So, um, you know, basically when we receive the Tao, uh, you know, our ancestors and this and descendants all, they all benefit. Okay. From our cultivation, right. There's a saying, you know, when a son receives or it could be daughter to uh, uh, receives Tao, right? Nine generations of ancestors are happy. Um, and when a son attains the Tao, nine generations of ancestors all benefit. Okay, so, I mean, this is just, uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, okay. So receiving the Tao, yeah. And then attaining the Tao, right, means that we actually succeed, we achieve uh, in this life. And when we return to heaven, we have basically, you can say we have a lotus position or we can stay there, right? Um, and so when that happens, then, uh, you know, these ancestors also can transcend life and death. Now, if we don't, if we're, you know, if we're just touring, <laughs> we're, if we're just a, a guest, a visitor in heaven, uh, and we have to come back down, then, you know, although the ancestors, they still benefit, right, while, while we're still here, 
uh, cultivating, um, you know, they, they're not going to transcend, right? So, so the best thing is, yeah, I mean, if we can go all the way, right, to, to, to achieve, uh, become like a bodhisattva or, you know, the, the Chinese, I mean, they have the different titles, right, for like we say immortal, immortal or something, right? So those are, those, like an immortal is, has transcended and, and they don't have to come back, okay? So, so these are above, like, uh, you can say, like the, the arhat, level okay the arhats yeah eventually well depending i mean if you're at the highest level arhat you don't but uh but anyways um so so hopefully you know anyways we, sh we should do our best <laughs> um right everyone can do their best and understand get, going from being confused and lost to being awakened uh achieve the Tao of heaven by way of fulfilling the Tao of humanity so this is important in the practice it's not i mean we think oh the Tao, Tao, the Tao of heaven right it's it's really the the Tao of humanity, okay? So um, this is by following those, you know, those practicing those virtues, right? Uh, those principles, the the golden rule, right? Uh, these things, right? <clears throat> um, all right. So uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, if we look at today's society. Uh, you know, due to the pursuit of fame and fortune, people have forgotten their root, their original self. Yeah, I mean, you know, public morals are in decline. Uh, getting, they're getting further away from the Tao, from the, from the, yeah, the true principles, the true self. Right? They don't know the conscience and morality. Uh, if we look at today, yeah, there's all sorts of evil, you can say, happening. Uh, people are committing uh, every day. Right, it's it's very sad to see, um, but unfortunately, it's just getting worse. Even as you know, technology advances, as supposedly you know, civilization is advancing, but in terms of the morality, it's it's in it's declining. Okay, uh, morals are corrupt. Right, people's hearts are in decline. Um, you know, they people are even shameless in their material desires and pursuit of fame and fortune. Right? They don't know, <laughs> they don't know morality, right? So, yeah, people will go do anything to get what they want, right? Uh, and even if that means, <laughs> uh, you know, doing things that are illegal or committing other crimes or, you know, even, yeah, going so far as, you know, killing people. To get what they want, right? So this is that's that's very, uh, that's very scary. Yeah, uh, it's sad too. Okay, so, uh, and and today, you know, you can say this abnormal behavior is becoming commonplace. Um, you know, so this is what what what's what's should be considered normal. I mean, uh, yeah, I I, I don't want to get into like. <laughs> You can say like politics, but you know, when l things get too liberal, uh, you have a problem. This is this is what we're saying is that abnormal behavior becomes what's normal in this today's society, uh, and and that is not that is not the way it should be, and and that will just lead to greater uh, chaos in society, right? The the, the morals. Uh, decline even more, or there will there will be no morals. Okay. <clears throat> uh, people, you know, they they're basically getting more selfish to you know care only for themselves. I mean, I, again, this is a generalization. Okay, so it's not everyone. Uh, there are people who do who are are good, right? They do care, uh, and they they aren't selfish, right? They're in fact they're selfless, and so. So actually, the Tao is for those people, right? So we so we want to get those people, uh, have them receive the Tao, right? Because they deserve it, okay? Um, and you know, <clears throat> but anyways, so, so these people, you know, they're not concerned about people around them, um, uh, or they put themselves before all else, right? Uh, all whether it's other people or over the principles, right? They just throw out the principles and just. just uh, you know, do whatever it takes um, uh, for themselves, and you know, forget about courage and righteousness. About doing the right thing, right? Um, you know, 
facing up or, or you know especially for other people right uh, it's, it's one thing to stand up for yourself but what about standing up for others who are uh, being mistreated right um, you know I just I mean there, there are still people who, who do that which is good you can say they're you know they're like call them like maybe good Samaritans right they <clears throat> they they step in when they see an injustice being done to try to help the victim okay so so but very few people do that okay um it's not i mean you know it's not to say that we should always you know put, put ourselves in danger right into danger uh in a dangerous situation to try to help someone um there, there are many ways to help right uh and mo a lot of people most people are, are really wasting their time right living an empty what we call an empty life right the passing time in leisure uh, maybe not committing any major wrongdoings, but with there's a uncertainty about life. We don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, we think, oh, yeah, just even people who receive the Tao, they say, ah, oh, you know, I, I'm still young. I can wait. I'll, I'll, I'll when I'm not as busy pursuing uh, my career or wealth or whatever. Um, I, I, you know, later when I maybe when I retire, I will start to oh maybe i'll think about cultivating <laughs> uh but unfortunately you know life is unpredictable anything can happen right we don't know our karma we don't know what's gonna happen to us um uh you know so also you know life without focus you know there's just enjoyment and idle talk right we have to so that's right remember we talked about before about uh knowing our life and our destiny right um so knowing why we are here, why we are living, um, what we are what we are here to do. Okay, so so not just you know just enjoy life and pursue the material things. Uh, then then that cycle will, of life and birth and death will be endless. Okay, um, and you know people are not not awakened and uh, and they're confused and lost. Okay, uh, so so you know people are basically ignorant or not knowing and you know without guidance they they wouldn't know uh, how to achieve salvation so so that's why we it's important for us to try to guide them right so that's that's what propagating Tao to introduce people to the Tao uh, we talk about it and you know because uh, you know yeah I mean the, of course you're gonna meet people who they don't believe they don't you know they're it's not for them uh you know so that's fine but we still need to try and find those who 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 do believe and who will who are able to accept it okay uh, because then you know that's one soul saved okay so um you know we can't save everyone but uh if we can save those we should we should save them right Okay, yeah, so, you know, there's 10, uh, all right, so sometimes we say 10 Dao, okay, so 10 Dao, or Iguan Dao, okay, so uh, basically, yeah, Iguan Dao, you can say is the the all-pervading Dao, <clears throat> 10 Dao is heavenly Dao, okay, so it's, it's all talking about the same thing. <clears throat> uh, basically, you know, this saying, it says, directly pointing to one's true mind to behold the essence and become a Buddha, so this is, um, that's, that's, Getting that point transmission, right, is pointing to that true mind of ours, the true mind, not not the human conscious mind. Okay, the true mind that's in there. The, you can say the Bodhi mind that's in there. Okay, so, and you know we then we can behold our true essence and become a Buddha. Okay, so we can. But I, you know, this is again, this is a process. It's not like people re they receive the Tao and then they're suddenly they're enlightened. It's, it's, it's not like that. I mean, we still have to uh, learn and practice, you know, to cultivate. Uh, and gradually we get this realization, this awakening, this enlightenment, okay? And it's, it's for most people, it's a gradual process, okay? Uh, Buddha nature is inherently pure and still, but we can still use we can use the mind to become a Buddha. Okay, so this is um, yeah the, the 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 you know the what we're cultivating we're not cultivating our true nature. True nature doesn't need cultivating. Right, it's pure. It's already uh, 
you know, it's, it's, we're, we're basically, the cultivating is transforming our human nature, you know, our, our human self, human consciousness, human ego, whatever, into this the Buddha nature, okay? Um, and so that's how we can become a Buddha. Uh, you know, we have to observe, so observe that Bodhisattva within, right? The Buddha within, right? The, so the heavenly portal is not, you know, found in any Dharma. So that's why this special, this point transmission, um, you know, it's, it's not found in any of the scriptures or anything like that, any of the Dharma's teachings. Uh, you know, Six Patriarch says, uh, basically, you know, without knowing one's original or true mind, right, it does not help to study the Dharma. Um, so we can study all sorts of uh, Dharma's teachings, but unless we get to know our true mind, uh, it is useless because in other words, getting to know our true mind, we have to get rid of those attachments, get rid of the ego, get rid of the subjectivity, the duality, all these things, right? Um, the the bad temper, the uh, the the our, our faults, you know, bad habits. Now, I mean, these are things. If, if we can get rid of these, it helps us to see, know our true mind, right? Get to that true mind, um, and so. So basically, if we if we are studying, you know, we're studying the Dharma, studying the teachings, the, the scriptures, but we don't do those things, then we're never going to know our true mind. So it's just kind of, you know, the, the we have to, so there's that process. We have to, that process of cultivation, getting rid of those things so that we can know our true mind. Then the study of the Dharma is useful, right, to us, uh, or, you know, has been, uh, will have been useful to us, right? Um, yeah, I mean, we can, you know, we can study all these thousands of sutras and scriptures, but in the end, you know, we must realize that the Tao is right here in front of us. Ah, see, the Tao is not in those words. It is in this, it, you can say it's like a self-realization, self-recognition of this true mind. Okay, so, and that's within us, all right? So it's not out there. Uh, the Tao is not found in words, scriptures. Okay, so remember the grand predecessor said the only point transmission is the Tao. Okay, so so that that's why that that's so uh, something very special. It's also you know the manifestation of Maitreya Buddha's pure land, right? Uh, the compassion of Maitreya brings joy and relieves suffering, right? So you know every Buddha has a pure land, right? It's you know and it's wherever they are, they, they have this pure land, right? So like Amitabha Buddha, right? He has the the well-known Western paradise or pure land of ultimate bliss. Okay, um, and Maitreya Buddha, he has he's right his pure land right now and to see to heaven. Uh, but he also is going to have his pure land on earth. So when Maitreya Buddha returns to earth, returns to this world, there will be a pure land on earth, and that will be the world of great harmony that we talk about. Uh, as the basically that's the purpose of the Tao, right? To create that world of great harmony. Um, uh, so, um, you know, so, you know, in, in cultivation, right, we are borrowing the false forms, right? This, like we said, everything is false here uh, to cultivate and realize the truth, right? That, uh, and, you know, the and we realize that the world is bittersweet. There is, uh, the good, the bad, right? All these things. I mean, uh, and to cultivate blessings according to affinity while actively changing our karmic fate. So as we cultivate, as we perform merits, as we uh, establish our virtues, then, you know, we, we are changing our karmic fate and we are establishing a new uh, destiny for ourselves. Okay. Um, now, uh, while, okay. So, you know, while we are in this realm of, desires right this we're in the in the realm of desires okay um it is the easiest to achieve actually right through basically so like in the dharma class we have at the last topic right it says we have faith vows and cultivation or practice okay and then ultimately achievement uh, or attainment right so you know we have to achieve through our practice of cultivation right we have to have that faith that, that initially so you know we have to have this faith, because Maitreya Buddha, this is in the white era, he is the savior of the white era, 
right? So we have to have faith in Maitreya Buddha. Um, and, uh, you know, so, and then we, we, we have to make vows, take those vows and fulfill those vows, okay? So that's part of our cultivation and practice. Um, so Maitreya, you know, uh, like, yeah, basically like in the, uh, like in the morning and evening, incense offering uh in the temple we do we have the repentance uh, there's a little part in there that we do the re we have a repentance uh and you know so it says you know maitreya grand patriarch whose marvelous dharma has no limits protects sentient beings if we repent before the buddha correct our faults and renew ourselves then we can be registered in heaven right and basically be a part of maitreya's pure land Okay, so that's that's what part of uh, that the repentance that we that we recite uh, during the, the 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 morning and evening the kato. Okay, so Maitreya because Maitreya is is you can say is the savior of this time right now, right? So <clears throat> yeah, uh, okay, and then uh, all right. Despite the you know incessant or uh, the endless fixations of body and mind and the endless outflows uh but you know when we practice in our practice you know like so one of the practices uh like of the six paramitas right is concentration or samadhi uh you know we can become aware and help others become aware um we can establish ourselves and help others become established right so that's also part of the <laughs> the the purpose of the Tao, right uh we can be accommodating flexible without hindrance we have to again be uh, learn to let go and and try to have the proper views the right views okay um, you know we have these hindrances and obstacles because you know we have attachments we have biases we have our stubbornness um, things like that so that's why cultivation again this transformation getting rid of these things all right um, right now Confucianism or well, I should say the Confucius teachings and practice, okay, uh, is, is that is the mainstream practice today for us, for our cult, for us as cultivators, right? It's the most appropriate practice for modern society, right? Because remember, we talked about the how mor morals are in decline or <laughs> kind of non-existent in some cases. Um, this is where the Confucian values, you know, the principles uh and practice is that is the the destiny for for this world to to get to that pure land uh, the maitreya's pure land okay uh so we cultivate at home and in society right so basically you know the the, the in the human relationships that we have so between the parents should be kind to children ch children should be filial right there's respect among uh siblings and peers etc you know all those those virtues we talk about right cultivating the Tao of heaven by way of the Tao of humanity so that's what we so really the Tao of humanity is what Confucius talked about what he was teaching right the Tao of humanity um, you can say that Lao Tzu was talking about the Tao of heaven although he talked about some ah well yeah I mean but really Confucius is talking about the, the Tao of humanity so it's this is something that's more closer to us right because this is this affects uh, this we we relate directly to this because this is how we uh, do things, how we conduct ourselves in relation to others. Okay, so you know, so yeah, so the Tao of humanity is confusion values and principles in practice. Okay, so that that's really what it is. Um, okay, okay, so there's uh, yeah, we can do I don't know. So these three types of giving uh, we've talked about before. Okay, so I'm not I'm just gonna, <laughs> all right, you know, so there's material giving there. Dharma or teaching, basically guiding, uh, and fearless giving is also you know it's kind of you can say encouraging or doing things uh, um, that other people don't want to do. You know, um, we act without attachments to merit or forms. That's the Bodhisattva way, right? So again, when we when we do things, yeah, everything that we do to benefit sentient beings, others, it's we get there is merit, but we should not we should not ha have any attachment to those merits if we have. The idea of having those merits, then 
uh, basically we have no merits, right? Again, that, that story of Bodhidharma pointing out to Emperor, Emperor Liangwu, right? That he had no merit from all the good works that he did because he was attached to the forms and merits. Okay, so we have to be careful. We have to make sure we don't have that kind of attachment to the, to the merits and forms. Right? Inspiration is in the moment. It's untainted, right? There's, you know, how many times people feel they're inspired uh, when they hear, oh, a very touching story or something. Uh, but how long does that inspiration last? Okay, um, it's really, you know, at that moment, maybe it's, it's just pure uh, uh, inspiration. But then later on, you know, we kind of, eh, we kind of go back to, and we kind of lose it. <laughs> All right. Um, but uh, so, so we should always, yeah, so it should, you know, it should not be based on things that are just temporary, fleeting, like emotions, things like that, okay? So we, we have to, we're acting with true sincerity, we're not attached to forms, okay? Um, <coughs> all right, and then also, of course, we have three inseparables in cultivation, right? So we should never leave the temple or the Tao field, never, don't leave the holy teachings, and don't leave the, the worthies or, you know, Chen and Chen Chen. Uh, and you could say, some people say, don't leave the, the sentient beings. And that's kind of true as well in that, we, you know, we're, we're cultivating, when we cultivate and we propagate the Tao, I mean, we have to have sentient beings. I mean, if there are no sentient beings, then we cannot become, you know, bodhisattvas uh, can only be a bodhisattva when there are sentient beings. Right. Without sentient beings, then there's no there's no need. Right. So so uh, in other words, this is also mean that yeah, we don't cultivate like going off to the mountain and just meditating. You know that that's we're not helping sentient beings. Okay. So so we have to um, help sentient beings. Uh, we recognize the, the truth and cultivate diligently. Okay. Practice and nurse without attachment to forms again. Okay, so do not pursue the heterodox practices. They are not the ultimate, right? So these are things like qigong or various different uh, practices, fortune telling, you know, uh, th those kinds of things. Um, they they are not the ultimate practice. Okay, um, you know, we have to improve and elevate the state of mind and break the illusion of forms. Right, do our best to practice the Tao of humanity. And okay, uh, the. Do not cultivate human sentiment, right? So we say Dao in Chinese. So, yeah, uh, but act according to reason, fulfill our vows and repay the grace of heaven. You know, human sentiment is like, oh yeah, you know, this person is nice to me, so I, I will kind of, uh, I will listen to them or I will follow them. And oh, you know, I don't like this other person, so I'm not going to <laughs> treat them well, you know. So that that's that's the common uh, human thing to do, but that that's human, that's, you know, cultivating human sentiment, and that's not the way of Tao, okay? So that, that won't get us to where we want to go, <laughs> I mean, if we really want to cultivate. So we have to, uh, we, we cannot do that, okay? Um, you know, we have to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we have to make uh, adjustments to our mindset and attitude, our views, our perspectives, correct our habits to recognize the true and from the false, okay? Uh, you know, in essence, we have to break through uh, the obstacles and transcend one's old self to create a new life and destiny. Okay, so all right, uh, oops, yeah, all right. So in the platform, Susa it says our original, our Bodhi mind is pure, right? If we use the mind, okay, uh, I think we had this quote earlier. Uh, we can become Buddha, all right? So everything should be done according to the Tao, right? Um, whatever we do uh, in everyday lives, because the because because we are immersed in the Tao. A Tao is everywhere, right? So um, so we should. That's, we should be following that, uh, the principles of the Tao. <clears throat> so, understand the extraordinary tradition of Iquan Tao. We, we should repent, be grateful, make, make and fulfill vows, dedicate ourselves, and, and you know, even make sacrifices, okay? Um, you know, this, right, so this, uh, yeah, we have to make use of, you know, well, this, this, this Tao, the practice, you know, it's special because it allows us to awaken to our original, our true mind, uh, the, uh, and essence, and we can use it in, in our daily lives, okay? Um, and we, we, letting, we have to let our conscience and Buddha nature be in charge, right? And we can transform and transcend ourselves while also helping others to transform and transcend, okay? So, uh, again, uh, this is, yeah, we have to do these things. All right, so, 
And then, you know, if I, uh, I'll just mention this about three, you know, so the three treasures basically that we receive in the Tao, it encapsulates the truth of the Tao, the principles and heaven's mandate, right? That's what we talk about. Um, the heavenly, uh, yeah, so, you know, so basically all the uh, teachings, the scriptures, the sutras, the classics, they're all, you can say it's all condensed into the three treasures, right? If you expand the three treasures, it's like, it's all of those, okay? Uh, now, uh, okay, and and actually, you know, the three treasures can be further condensed into that point transmission of the heavenly portal, okay? So, um, basically, you know, we look, we have to look inward, right? This heavenly portal is the doorway to our true self, right? So, uh, the, 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 when I showed this earlier, you know, the arrows are going to the right, starting from the zero and one, the, the, the essence, uh, and function, the Tao, right? Creating everything. Now we are here, we need to go back. We need to go back, return to our true self. Okay, so so from the forms, we return, you know, this, through the duality, uh, we have to get rid of all that, and then we can finally arrive at our true self. So this is part the process of cultivation through the, using the three treasures, right? Um, you know, that's the whole practice of getting back to returning to the original true self, right? And we do that, we have to look inward, right? We look inward. That's that, uh, the, that, that heavenly portal, that doorway to our true self. The doorway to our true self, our true self is inside. So we have to look inward, recognize the true self and manifest the conscience, right? Um, so, and, you know, so we can, that's why we always talk about like self-reflection, introspection, repentance, right? gratitude, compassion, relinquishment, sincerity, right? This is all uh, trying to achieve that oneness, right? The non-duality and non-subjectivity, right? <clears throat> and non-attachment, right? So, you know, heaven responds to that true self, right? Not to the false self or ego, right? So, uh, so only when we can get to our true self, and that's when we have true sincerity, then uh, heaven responds to that, right? Remember, say like Tao. There is we get response from Tao. That's the way we get response from Tao. It's not from out here, from from the superficial self, from the ego. That does not will not happen. Okay. All right. Uh, so um, you know, holy teacher says you know Tao cultivation is not accidental, right? We have this foundation and affinity to cultivate. So it's 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 not an accident that we're here. That we received a Tao that we uh, that we are actually cultivating. Um, it's you know due to our foundation, our affinity, right? And you know if we do not cultivate in this life, then when when are we going to do it? I mean, again, this this is there's a window of opportunity right now. This uh, that is open, but it's going to close at some point. So if we don't cultivate now, uh, we are wasting our time and uh, wasting this precious opportunity transcend right so we have been through hundreds of calamities and thousands of lifetimes to obtain this life that we have now right uh who knows you know those sixty thousand years in this cycle alone of how many lifetimes have we been through and you know how many and probably many calamities we've been through too <clears throat> right all those lifetimes have gone by without this golden opportunity that we have today during this universal salvation uh so to miss this golden opportunity to transcend will be our greatest regret. Okay, so don't, at the end of your life, don't regret saying, oh, I wish I had cultivated. I wish I had done better, you know, put in more effort to, to cultivate. Um, you know, then it, it'll be too late then, right? Um, okay. Oh, all right. So, yeah, let me just finish with this. Um, uh, you know, there's a song that Holy Teacher wrote. It's to the melody of uh, Hand in Hand. Right? It says, if not for universal salvation, how many souls would be adrift? Right? If not for heaven's great concern, how many souls would be helpless? If not for the special karma that we have, how can we meet in this world? Right? <clears throat> uh, if not for sufficient having sufficient affinity, can we be teacher, you know, Holy Teacher and disciple? Right? So... You know, again, for us to uh, have our holy teacher as 
enlightened master um you know that's it's uh you know it's a very special affinity that we have um because of prom the promises that we made right we take on the mission and the duty of this universal salvation right the, this <clears throat> the you can say the promises or the vows that we made um whether in heaven and also here um right because we can't bear to see souls suffer right uh so we're like bodhisattvas we we can't bear to see others suffering so we want to help try to save them uh, showing concern each day and night because we are entrusted with the well-being of all uh not giving up despite uh, hardships so you know this cultivation uh itself can be difficult um but you know also you know propagating the Tao could be even more difficult and you know trying to save sentient beings uh, but you know we still have to go through those endure those hardships right because we we have a duty we have a responsibility right because of the strength of will and resolve we, you know we spurring ourselves with urgency we're not hindered by hardships with hardships come greater courage there's no fear of being alone right the buddha holy teacher is always with us if we are sincere and we are uh helping the Tao. our hearts and hands are united uh, working to achieve the ideal right writing this chapter of history our hearts etched with both joy and misery wish all souls to suffer no more to drift in this world no more so that is obviously the wish of bodhisattvas and buddhas and this should be our wish as well to that there will you know sentient beings do not have to suffer um so we should do our best to cultivate definitely we have to cultivate save ourselves cultivate and also to try to uh guide and lead others to to also cultivate and onto the path of salvation all right so uh, i'm sorry i went a little bit over um if i had said anything wrong or not satisfactory i asked the buddhas for forgiveness and also asked uh the Transmain Masters and lectures for corrections. Uh, thank you.